Hello friends, this video on evolution part 15 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So now let us see what is Hardy-Weinberg principle. So let us see what exactly is Hardy-Weinberg principle. Now this principle states that the frequency of alleles in a population always remain constant generation after generation. So the frequency of alleles, that means the number of times each allele occurs. So that will remain the same over all the generations. So this is also known as genetic equilibrium. So we use the term equilibrium wherever we talk about something which remains conserved or something which remains constant. You would have heard about thermal equilibrium, you would have heard about chemical equilibrium. So in a very similar way, this is genetic equilibrium where the frequency of alleles is going to be constant over all the generations. Now, this will become more clear when I take an example. So let me take an example of a very small population. However, this principle holds true for a bigger population because when the population is big, only then you can talk more precisely about the frequency of alleles or the frequency of genes. However, just to so just to understand this, we will take an example of a small population of two people. So let us suppose we have just considered a very small population which has only two people. Okay. Now we consider that we right now we are considering a particular trait and that is the type of hair. So hair type can be straight, hair type can be curly. So we say that straight hair, for straight hair we say the allele is going to be capital S and for curly hair we are going to denote it by small s. And we also say that straight hair is a dominant trait over curly hair. Right. So now somebody who has got straight hair, what would be the genotype of that person? It can be capital S, capital S or it can be capital S, small s. Whereas somebody who has curly hair will have a genotype small s, small s. Right. So all these are the basic concepts. So now here in this population of two people, what do we see that this girl has got curly hair. That means the genotype here is small s, small s. And this girl has got cap uh, straight hair. So this can this can be the genotype can be heterozygous. The genotype can be homozygous, right? Let us assume that this is homozygous and we are just assuming. So if it is homozygous, so in that case, if I ask you to calculate the frequency of both the alleles. So what are the alleles that we have? Capital S and small s. These are the two alleles. So let me denote it by capital the small p. So let us suppose that p denotes the frequency of capital S. So what is the frequency of capital S? Two, two times it occurs out of four times. So it is 2 out of 4 which is nothing but 50% we can say. And what is the frequency of small s? Let us denote that by q. So we say this is frequency of small s. So that is also 2 out of 4 which is nothing but 50%. So what do we see? Frequency of one allele plus the frequency of other allele is 50% plus 15% that is 100% which means 1. So that means p plus q is equal to one. So the sum of the frequency of alleles over in a population will remain constant. Now even if you assume that this straight hair was heterozygous, even if it would have been like this, in that case also P plus Q is going to be 1. That is the frequency of alleles, the total frequency of all the alleles is going to be constant. If you want, we can calculate that as well. For example, in that case what would be P? That is frequency of capital S. That will be 1 out of 4 right and what would be q that would be 3 out of 4 so what would be p plus q that will be again 1 so p plus q will always be equal to 1 where p and q represent the frequency of each allele so this was about a small population now let us look at a bigger population now what happens if we consider the same example but in a bigger population where two where the total number of people are 10 and in out of those 10 people eight of them have got straight hair and two of them have got curly hair 
right and let us assume that their genotypes are something like this now curly hairs will definitely have smallest smallest and for straight hair let us assume that some of them are homozygous that is some of them have capital s capital s whereas some others have capital s small s that is some others are heterozygous so let us suppose this is how the genotype of all the persons in this population is so now if you want to calculate the frequency of both the alleles, so what will happen? P is the frequency of capital S. So the frequency of capital S. So here, how, what is the total number of possibility? Like how here it was total number of possible options were 4. So in this case, there are 10 people and for each people there are 2, 2 alleles. So total options are 20 and out of those 20 positions, how many are occupied by capital S? You can literally count it 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 and 11. So 11 out of 20, right? Similarly, if you calculate Q, that is the frequency of small s. So how many places you have small s? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, so 9, so 9 out of 20 is small s. Now if you try to calculate P plus Q, what do you get? 11 plus 9 divided by 20, that is equal to 1. So here also you see P plus Q is equal to 1. That is the frequency of alleles in a population will always be constant. That is the sum of the frequencies of both the alleles will always be equal to 1 in all the generations. So this is going to hold true all the time except when mutations occur. So whenever there is a deviation from this rule that would say that some evolution is taking place because that means some mutation is happening. That means there is some individual which has got some different allele other than these and that those differences will come from mutation. Not only mutation, it can come from any of the factors which causes evolution. So any deviation from Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium would mean or would indicate that evolution is taking place. So many a times this Hardy-Weinberg principle is also known as Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium because this law is all about the equilibrium state. So now let us look at the same principle in algebraic terms. So in terms of its algebraic equation, let us see how do we go about it. Now we know that for any diploid organism, any trait is actually denoted by two alleles because two alleles together will denote a gene. Now let us take the example of yellow and red flowers. So let us suppose we have a bunch of yellow flowers and we have a bunch of red flowers. So these are the two, two alleles which we are going to consider. So one allele is going to be capital Y which is going to denote yellow color so capital Y is for yellow color and the other color is going to be red and that is going to be denoted by small y. Now using capital Y for yellow this shows that this is the dominant trait. Okay so now in this case what will be P? P is frequency of one allele so frequency of the first allele so let us say that allele is capital Y in this case. So capital Y is frequency is denoted by P and Q denotes the frequency of the second allele and the second allele here in this case is small y. Now as per the Hardy-Weinberg principle, what do we know? We know that P plus Q will always be equal to 1. That is what we know from Hardy-Weinberg principle. Now if we square on both sides, what will happen? If you square on both sides, this will be P plus Q whole square which is equal to 1. And what is this? This is nothing but P square plus 2pq plus q square is equal to 1 and this equation actually gives you a lot of information and this is actually the math algebraic expression of Hardy-Weinberg principle. Now what does this p square denote? This p square actually denotes the frequency which will appear as homozygous dominant. As I said, P denotes the frequency of capital Y. So when you say P square, it actually denotes the frequency in which capital Y will appear as capital Y, capital Y. 
so that means the number of times homozygous dominant will be displayed similarly q square denotes the frequency that a hetero that a homozygous recessive will be displayed that means y y will be displayed because q denotes Q denotes the frequency of small y. So this will actually give you the frequency of homozygous recessive. And what about 2PQ? 2PQ will actually tell you the frequency that a heterozygous will be displayed. So something like capital Y, small y. So this equation actually tells you what would be the frequency of the appearance of homozygous dominant, what would be the frequency of appearance of homozygous recessive and what would be the frequency of appearance of heterozygous. So with the help of this equation you can actually get all these values. Now what is most important if you want to get all these values which if, if you get any of these values will you be able to calculate all of them? Not really. Because if I tell you that, okay, these many flowers are uh, yellow. Now, whenever you talk about yellow flowers, now a flower is going to be yellow. That means its genotype can either be capital Y, capital Y or its genotype can be capital Y, small y. So even if I give you the data about yellow flower, you are not sure about the genotype. But if I give you the data about the red flower, you always know that the red flower's genotype will can only be small y, small y. So if you get the data about the homozygous recessive, you can actually calculate the rest of them. Because if you get the value of q, you can calculate p using this equation because p plus q is equal to 1. Once you get P and Q both, you can calculate this also. That is the heterozygous. That is why knowing the homozygous recessive value is the most important because if you know that value you will be able to get all other values and this is all about hardy weinberg principle we will also solve a few problems in order to make sure that you got it right so here what did we say we say that this p squared is going to tell you the frequency of appearance of homozygous dominant which is like capital y capital y 2pq will tell you about the heterozygous frequency and q square will tell you about the homozygous recessive. Thank you. Please visit examfear.com for an easy four step learning process absolutely free of cost. Watch video lessons, ask questions, refer notes, and take an online test. Thank you once again.